Today we're comparing the Insta360 ONE R up against my GoPro Hero 8 Black. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys, this is Shane. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and also click that little bell. I have reviews and tech tutorials coming up as often as I can post them. So today, what we're doing is checking out two different action cameras. Now, full disclosure, I paid full price for my GoPros. These are Hero 8 Blacks and the Insta360 ONE R was sent out directly from Insta360, which was super cool. They reached out via email and said, hey, can you please do a comparison or are you interested in doing a comparison? between our camera and your GoPros. I said, absolutely. I always like testing action cameras. I'm a big fan of them now after moving away from the big gimbals. I really love the stabilization in these kind of cameras. And I thought this would make for a really cool test. I only had one condition that I could also add in my user experience as opposed to just saying favorable things. If you're looking for a favorable things review, this won't be for you. What I plan on doing in this video is not only showing you the difference in the video quality, but also the audio quality as well as the functionality and usability of each unit, because these are the things that a lot of people don't talk about, which camera is best depending on your particular needs, and also just how sort of techy you might actually be, because the Insta360 did have a learning curve, even for me, and I've got plenty of cameras here at the house that I've bought over the years. I'm shooting with two right now. I've got two or three in another room, and I'm very, very familiar with action cameras, and I'm also very familiar with professional cameras. So. This is one of those things where it did take me a little while to learn it. So I gave myself three or four weeks before posting this video. So what you're about to see are some comparison shots. And then I'll, at the end of this video, I'll also talk about which camera I think is the best value as well as who might want one over the other. I'll leave time codes in the description below as well as links to both of these cameras. Let's get into it. Now this first test is completely unstabilized. And what I've learned from this is you might as well leave stabilization on, on both of the cameras. Now the Insta360 ONE R has the advantage of being able to add it in post through the Insta360 software as well. So if that's important to you, definitely do that. But I would just leave the flow state on on the Insta360. I would also just leave the Hyper Smooth on the GoPro. Both of them don't really detract from the picture quality. It just adds stabilization that's almost on par with a gimbal. And that's what I'm noticing here. Now there's one other key difference between the GoPro and also the Insta360 ONE R, and that's the field of view. Both are set to wide, but the GoPro Hero 8 Black looks a little bit wider. Interestingly enough, you can also change the field of view in post-production with the Insta360 ONE R, but just in terms of apples for apples, I like both of the colors, but the GoPro is slightly wider. In terms of sharpness, they're both extremely sharp. So the picture quality is about even, and they're also about even in terms of just being terrible without stabilization, so leave it on. Let's do a stabilized test now, just walking in 4K 30p outdoors down a bit of a grass meadow. This was a beautiful outdoor location for this. Couldn't have asked for a better day here in winter as well. It's actually colder than it looks. But let's take a look at the footage and I'll comment on this as well. One of the first things I've noticed is just how infinitely better both of the cameras are with stabilization. As I mentioned before, if you're gonna be using either of these two cameras, you're buying it for its epic stabilization. I would call this a dead heat in terms of how the GoPro Hero 8 performs versus the Insta360 ONE R. I also did a quick test where I turn around and get completely backlit. As you can see from the footage, the GoPro handles the backlit situation, no problems at all. I was really surprised just how well it handled it in automatic mode. So both of the cameras are running in automatic mode. I haven't got any manual settings applied. I think the GoPro handles this brilliantly. Now in terms of how the Insta360 handled the backlit situation, it does it no problems at all. I would say this is about an even test as well when you're comparing it to the GoPro. 
And lastly, if we take a look at the color science between both of these cameras, I can clearly see a difference in the greens. Now, the sky blue is pretty much the same, but the Insta360 ONE R definitely looks far more saturated and a little bit more surreal in terms of the grass. Now, if we take a look at the GoPro, this sort of reminds me more of what I thought I saw on the day. And you can also see a little bit of a difference in sharpness just on the grass. But in the foreground, the GoPro is extremely sharp. In the foreground, the Insta360 is also really sharp. But we get that increased saturation, which might be taking away from some of the definition on the grass there, but it's no big deal. I actually really like both of the colors straight out of camera. They're both extremely usable. And you can always tweak these a little bit if you so choose. But yeah, overall, both of them are pretty cool. But I'm gonna give the nod, I think, to the GoPro for keeping the colors maybe a little bit more natural. Up next, we're checking out 4K 30p with the wide field of view. Now, both of these have a really wide field of view. You can still take it further again, but I really like this particular framing. The fisheye is still there, but it's not anywhere near as bad as the full super view mode, which is the really, really wide field of view. So I really like this. Both of these cameras handle it no problems at all. Now, if we take a look at the Insta360 ONE R, you can definitely see a difference in the green. So that will give away which camera is which the majority of this particular test. Now, in terms of stabilization with the wide field of view, both of them do this, no problems at all. Now, I was holding both of the cameras like this. It looks like the GoPro was aimed a little bit lower, unfortunately, but I did a single arm test, so we'll do a comparison between that. But either of these cameras will be fine for vlogging and walking. I think this is where they shine. The stabilization on both looks spectacular. If we take a look at the GoPro, walking down this rather steep hill and handles the backlight situation no problems at all. A few lens flares there, but nothing too much. As you can see from this particular test, the Insta360 ONE R has no problems with this walking down the hill test either. We get some lens flares, and as you can see from the grass, it looks super green and just really, really cool. So this straight out of camera color, it's something that will definitely appeal to people who never want to grade their footage or anything like that and just get a really vivid image straight out of camera. Now in terms of sharpness and how they both handle slow motion, they both do this extremely well. So either, again, is a great choice for someone who wants to get 60p footage and slow it down to 30p. If you're playing this back at regular speed, they both look fine as well. But I know there's a lot of people who like to use their cameras at 60 frames per second and then scale it back to 30p. So that's what you're looking at right now. Both of these cameras look great. Now in terms of the field of view, I really feel like the GoPro at 4K 60p has a wider field of view with exactly the same settings as before than the Insta360 ONE R. The ground just looks that little bit closer on the Insta360, but that wouldn't be a deal breaker. It's pretty minimal, but in terms of stabilization, picture quality, sharpness, all that kind of stuff, they both look great. I'm just gonna to edge towards the GoPro in this situation for capturing the colors a little bit more organically. Up next, we're doing the all important shake test. That's when I grab both of the cameras, shake them left to right, up and down, all that kind of stuff, and we compare the stabilization. So we had the full boost mode on, on the GoPro and the flow state on, on the Insta360 ONE R. Taking a look at the Insta360 ONE R firstly, I think it handled it pretty well considering how much I was shaking the camera. If we take a look at the GoPro, I think it actually outperforms the Insta360 ONE R. It's a different kind of stabilization. The GoPro feels like it's locking the picture down a little bit better. You can see the other camera in shot moving, but if we take a look at the Insta360 ONE R, it looks just a little bit more violent still, even though the background in the far distance is pretty much locked down, the foreground looks a little less stable. But overall, both of them handle this stupid test, <laughs> no problems there at all. Like I mentioned, if you're gonna be running with either of these, both will do that extremely well, but in that over-exaggerated test of shaking it left to right, up and down, all that kind of stuff, I think the GoPro just kept things a little bit more stable in the foreground, but both did pretty well. All right, now the all-important low-light test. So I've owned the GoPro now for a number of months, and one of its biggest flaws is that it absolutely sucks indoors. Even with studio lighting, you get a lot of noise. Now, I shot this particular section just as the sun was coming down. There might be some natural sunlight coming through my blinds right here, but not much. So right behind me, I set up both of the cameras with some studio lighting. I actually had a couple of ring lights on. I had two ring lights on to begin with, and in this test, the Insta360 left the GoPro for dead. There's far less noise in the shadows. It just looks much, much better. And this isn't surprising because all my tests and experience with the GoPro indoors 
have just been horrendous. It's an outdoor camera, ooh, it's an outdoor camera only in my opinion. And when you're outdoors in regular sunlight or even overcast days, the GoPro is an absolute winner. Now, if you're looking to use something indoors from time to time, this would be a much better choice because it handles the low light situation much, much better. If we take a look at the low light comparison where I'm only using one lamp, the Insta360 is absolutely killing. The GoPro, it's not even close. And when I turn them both off and we're just illuminated from a little bit of natural light coming in and the Pac-Man light, you can definitely see that the GoPro is completely unusable. If you're at a product show, for example, and you're gonna be walking around taking some video, the Insta360 is a far better choice than the GoPro. You can also get the one inch sensor mod, which will give you a larger sensor, let more light in, the video will be far more stable as you're walking around indoors under regular lighting conditions than the GoPro. The GoPro footage is next to unusable in those kind of situations, and the stabilization also suffers under poor lighting. If you are gonna be using the Insta360, attach this or the 5K mod to it, and you're gonna be in business to get some pretty decent results considering these are action cameras. Now, if we take a look at the photo quality between both of these cameras, they both do a really great job. I've also cropped in to a 16 by nine aspect ratio from that of a four by three photo. The Insta360 does a great job at capturing my backyard. If we take a look at the GoPro, it also captures a really beautiful photo. The biggest difference between them is the shadows. The GoPro looks a little bit darker, than that of the Insta360 ONE R. But overall, both take a really nice shot. I also tested HDR mode, where the Insta360 gave me this photo. It looks really, really sharp. The sunlight is coming through the trees, but the trees and the levels on the foreground look a lot darker than that of the GoPro HDR image, which basically captured everything a lot brighter. So I don't know what happened there, but both take really good photos. I guess it just depends on which one you like best, but both of these were taken with exactly the same settings and yielded very different results. Up next, I'm gonna show you some of the really cool things you can do with the Insta360 ONE R that I can't do with my GoPro Hero 8 Black. To get a very similar thing, I would need to go out and also buy the GoPro Max 360, which in Australia would, would add a $700 price tag to the price of already owning a GoPro. So you need two separate cameras to get pretty much the same sort of functionality you can get with just the Insta360 ONE R pack that comes with both of the lenses. So food for thought there, if you wanna save a few bucks and get some artistic shots, this would definitely be a really great choice. When using the multifunction bullet time handle or the invisible selfie stick, you can get some really great shots. And I'll show you a combination and mix of them right now. These driving shots really showcase just what the 360 lens can do. I've got the camera in one position and all of these angles were done in editing. So I can just pick and choose which camera angle I want to showcase different parts of this little adventure. If you do see any blotches on the screen, it's because it was raining. Much like the car scene, the 360 degree lens works great when walking. You can hold the camera behind you or in front of you and just pick and choose which shots you want. You can get some really artistic shots like this. And it's bucketing down right now. I'm getting rained on. So if you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up. A couple of the other cool effects you can do thanks to the software that you can download for free from the Insta360 website is the tiny planet effect as well as the sphere. Both of these look great and they can be used with some artistic creativity in the timeline depending on the type of project you want to produce. Overall, I was blown away by just how well this worked. If you keep the camera parallel to the invisible selfie stick, the stick pretty much stays completely out of shot. I'm just blown away and impressed by how well this works. I should point out there were a couple of times where the stitching didn't look perfect and that's the seam between both of the lenses on the 360 mod. But overall, it's still a great effect and most people probably won't notice any of those small stitching problems. So we all know that audio quality is even more important than video quality on the most part because if you can't hear someone properly in a video, odds are you're gonna click off that video and watch something else. So audio quality has to be good these days. So in terms of the built-in microphones, the GoPro does sound better. There's no questions about it, just has a fuller, nicer sound, and it can also handle louder sound sources a lot better due to the built-in limiting. So it brings the volume down as the sound sources get louder. I really like that, it means you're not gonna get distorted audio. From my test with the Insta360 ONE R, I was trying a behind-the-scenes video on my other YouTube channel, 
this just distorted any time I played guitar. So it's not very usable at all for loud sound sources. For just talking into it, you'll get away with it, but it's nowhere near as good. Let's do a quick audio test between the Insta360 ONE-R, which you're listening to right now, and the GoPro HERO 8 Black. Can you hear a difference? I'll swap back again. Let's do a quick audio test between the Insta360 ONE-R, which you're listening to right now, and back to the HERO 8 Black, just as a point of comparison. Let's talk a little bit about faster frame rates. Now, it's no surprise both of these can handle extremely fast frame rates to get that slow motion effect. Now, one of the positives of the Insta360 is at those faster frame rates, you're still getting relatively good picture quality. One of the criticisms I have of the GoPro, once you get up to about 100 frames per second in 2.7K or even 1080p or above, it starts to look overly sharpened and something happens to the color that's not very pleasing. It almost looks like it's been filmed out of a completely different camera. Whereas Insta360, while there are some changes to the quality of the video, the colors look still very similar to that at shooting at regular frame rates. So I'm gonna give the edge here to the Insta360, but if you don't have a point for comparison, both of these will do that job, no problems at all. Let's talk about functionality, usability, and just the learning curve when it comes to both of these cameras. So let's talk a little bit about the, the on-screen displays and also the menu system. The menu system on the GoPro is so easy to use. It's infinitely better. The touch screen is larger. It's more responsive. It's easier to store presets. You don't have to keep breaking out your phone to get the most out of this particular unit. I really felt like without my mobile phone, the Insta360 is almost impossible to use, and I've had this for a number of weeks. Sure, you can get around most of the menu options pretty easily, but I felt like its biggest downside was just going from mode to mode. There were certain options you'd have to just try to get. Say you wanted to go from 25p to 50p, sometimes it wouldn't stop. It would just scroll to the one after it or the one before it. I just found the touch screen too fiddly, which means you have to use your phone. The other thing I don't like about the phone app is it drained a full iPhone 6S Plus battery in no time at all. It almost felt like it only took about 30 minutes of use before my phone was about to go flat. I tested this over and over. I can leave my phone uncharged all day and it's fine, I had the battery replaced recently. And this chews through the battery on my phone like you wouldn't believe. But in terms of the internal battery, it's fine, it will last for a good hour and even more so on both of these cameras. And lastly, let's wrap this up with workflow and functionality. So to get the files from GoPro to your computer to YouTube, all you need to do is take the SD card out, plonk it in your computer and upload the files to YouTube unless you wanna do some editing, you drop it into Final Cut or whatever program you use, Premiere, DaVinci, and then upload it once you've finished with the project. You can't do that with the Insta360 ONE-R. It's not designed like that. So. One of the advantages of this particular system, I'll say this, if you forget to add stabilization on, you can add it in the Insta360 app, whether it be on your phone or on the computer. Now I'm using the uh, one for my Apple Mac and I find this process extremely slow. Let's say for example, I got a video stored on this just with the regular lens. This isn't even the 360 mod. It will then have to be converted on your computer to a file that Final Cut, DaVinci or Premiere can read. Now there are plugins, but I'm a Final Cut user and there isn't a plugin for it. So I had to download a standalone app because anytime I tried to do this on my phone, it was completely unusable. So I had to use the Mac version and then that whole process takes a lot of time. I had to convert every single video you've seen in this video before I got it into Final Cut, which is just a productivity killer. Now, if you're like me and you find productivity to be one of the most important things, go for the GoPro or the Macs or whatever over this. If you wanna get something that's gonna give you more creative freedom in post, then the Insta360 is the way to go, but it requires more work. Sure, getting some of the effects aren't that hard. The Tiny Planet effect, for example, is one of my favorites, and that isn't a hard thing to set up and do, but it does require that app to get that file to look a certain way before you can get it into your project that you wanna edit with other footage. So keep that in mind, that whole process is extremely laborious and I didn't enjoy that at one bit whatsoever. The GoPro, take the SD card out and all those files that are on that SD card can be read simply by plugging it into the computer. It's a big time saver and that might be the biggest deal breaker from someone who just wants a point and shoot to someone who will have more flexibility in post, but it comes at the expense of time. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took forever to put together 
This is like hour two of me doing this part of the narrative section. So if you did enjoy it or if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. A massive thank you to Insta360 for sending out this pack. I gotta say I had a lot of fun with it, even through the fr frustration of trying to learn a new menu system, a new touch screen, a new app, some software for editing. After a couple of weeks, I kind of felt pretty comfortable using it, but it's definitely not quite as functional as the GoPro. The plug and play thing appeals to a guy like me who makes a lot of videos. So if you're someone who might be using it occasionally, those kind of things might not matter to you at all. And I really think this Insta360 is great. Do I plan on getting rid of my GoPros? Absolutely not. There's a lot to love about them. There's a lot to love about the Insta360 in terms of its value and what you can get out of it. Some of those creative shots are pretty awesome and that's where you'll probably see it coming up in more videos. It's that bullet time thing, man. I love it. So once my knee gets better, I plan on testing this in a couple of more rugged ways. So yeah, overall, great little camera. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.